Sound Design. All right, I just published a new article, so I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you some of the updates I've made to the Aiming Triangles business card. So this article is all about placing and aiming your stage monitors for maximum game before feedback. To get maximum game before feedback, you need maximum rejection. And to do that, you need to place and aim your stage monitors well so that they're aimed right into the null point of that microphone. I really like this product that Dave Rat created called the Polar Pointer. Now, you can mount this in a mic clip, then look at where the lasers point for a supercardioid or hypercardioid microphone, and then place your stage monitors in the exact right point. And then I thought, I wonder if I could just update my Aiming Triangles business card to make it sort of like a poor man's Polar Pointer. So over here you can see I wrote, I drew in new lines, one for super cardioid and one for hyper cardioid. So super has its own line here, which you can uh, see is also gonna be over here on the left in between 50 and 60 at 55 degrees. And then hyper is this line that it's almost touching right below here. So how might you use this in the field? Well, if you take the aiming triangles business card, this is the old one, but I'm gonna show you the demo. You could put it on top of your microphone like this, right? And then you can see where the laser is pointing on the ground and put your speakers in the right place, point them at the microphone, and it should be pretty precise. The other cool thing is that then you can sort of rotate it around the microphone like that because the pattern is in uh, all the way around the microphone, right? It's not just 2D, it's 3D. So I could have it here in the clip and then sort of rotate it down and see where my options are for placing the stage monitor. A couple of things to keep in mind with this. Um, it's not perfect. You can't just look at any microphone and say, oh, this is a super cardioid microphone, so I'm just gonna use Nathan's Aiming Triangles business card. I looked at several different microphones and it seems like there is no industry standard for exactly what that means. Over here we've got the Shure Beta 57A, which calls itself a super cardioid and says, my null points are at 120 degrees. We've also got the Bear Dynamic M201, which calls itself a hypercardioid, but has its null points at the exact same place. So here's an image from the Shure spec sheet, and here's an image from the Bear Dynamic spec sheet. Can't agree, I don't know why. I guess we need to look up the spec sheet for every microphone that we use. That's fine, we should know about the hardware that we use. It would just be nice if, you know, people say hypercardioid and they need one specific thing. That's okay, just keep that in mind that even though I wrote, uh, I drew those lines in a specific place on this card, it might not be exactly there for your microphone. Okay, so that's the front of the microphone. Let's look at some of the updates I made to the back. Now, I know you guys hate it when I introduce information and then don't say what it's for or uh, why it's valuable. So, below this video, I'm going to add lots of links that will teach you more about this stuff. But if I were to try and explain all the stuff on the back of this little card, it would take me, I don't know, five days. So. This is a little table here to help convert from coverage angle to forward aspect ratio and lateral aspect ratio and backwards if you need to. And down here are some uh, calculations if you need a number that's not on this list. So if you have a speaker that's 65 degrees and you wanna calculate the forward aspect ratio and lateral aspect ratio, you can do that with these equations down here. Let's look at some more helpful equations. Here we have time to frequency and vice versa. So one divided by frequency equals time. So if we wanted to find the time period of 1K, that would be one divided by 1,000, which would be one millisecond, okay? So 0 0.001 seconds. If I wanna find the wavelength and I know the frequency, then I just need to divide the speed of sound by the wavelength. So down here we have some options for speed of sound. Let's say I'm working in feet, so 11, 29 divided by 1K gives me 
um, a wavelength of 1.129 feet. Here we've got your uh, phase to time conversion. This is really helpful when you're doing something like a main subalignment and you've got, you're looking at two phase traces and you can see that they're, I don't know, um, 60 degrees apart at 100 hertz. So you could say, okay, what's 60 divided by 360 divided by 100 hertz? And we can see that that's 1.67 milliseconds. If I multiply this by a thousand, that's more clear. 1.67 milliseconds. Some helpful estimations here for converting uh, distance to time and vice versa. I use this one a lot, 0.9 milliseconds per feet when I'm setting up and estimating an inline two element gradient subwoofer array. I know that I need to delay the rear sub by the spacing distance. So if I measure the spacing distance and I see that it's three feet, then I can just multiply three by 0.9 to get an estimation of 2.7 milliseconds delay for the rear sub. And then finally over here, I've got a tiny little linear to log conversion chart. These are the five big ones that Merlin Van Veen recommends that you memorize. And I'll put a link to his video below this video. Say for example that you know the front to back distance ratio of your sub to your audience is one to three, then you can expect a 10 dB contrast from front to back, not taking room gain into account. All right, so those are the updates to the aiming triangles business card. Please let me know what your suggestions are. I don't know if I can fit more information on this card, but um, if you see something that I did wrong or some way that I could organize this better to make it more useful to you, please let me know. Sound design. Yeah.